Uh, Fezzi, you were uh, telling me during the break, you're having another rough day today? Yeah, it's just, it's freezing up, it's anxiety, it's just... What's freezing up? It, me, I'm just, I go to talk and then I go blank and nothing's there. Hmm. And it's, it's really distressing because it's everything before I went on pills. I'm right back at square one. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really, really disheartening. What's disheartening? That do you, you feel the same way? That I feel exactly the same way. Mm-hmm. That it's just happening all over again. So you felt that way that whole last hour? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Where it's like, you know, that's why I took the pills, and then I take the pills, and I start shaking, and then I come off the pills, so I get dizzy and have withdrawal, mm-hmm. and, you know, then get really depressed, and then get through that, and back to the anxiety. So, I mean, the circle of it never stops. All right, I didn't notice you the last hour. What was going on? Just locking up, like just, you know, complete brain freezes there, mm. where my, my thoughts just weren't even working. Mm. And just felt awful about it. How bad it was last hour. So now I have to go see the pill guy today. Mm-hmm. And he's going to say, no, let's try this other pill. And I, don't, I honestly don't know what to say to him. Well, what I always used to say to my uh, pill guy was, I'll take more pills. Give me more and more pills. But that, you know what? Now in hindsight, that got me in my own troubles. Yeah. Now I'm going to think of it. Yeah. So I've just, I, I've got to sit in that guy's office today, and I don't know what to say to him. You want me to go? And I'll just say I'll, get, I'll eat the pills first. No, that's okay. You don't have to eat the pills first. Why don't I go with you, and uh, I'll go in and talk to the guy, and then we'll both come out, stun your neck, and take you away <laughs> where you can't hurt yourself anymore. Then it's two on one. I'm going to tell him that I'm afraid that you're hurting yourself. Don't tell them that. That's the sort of things they look for. Oh. They, uh, act, they Well, they don't even look for it. I shouldn't act like they play detective. They come right out and say, <laughs> do you feel like hurting yourself today? Do they say that all the time? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. They say it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever hurt yourself? No, I don't think I've hurt myself. No, never. Well, just through lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. Because if you hurt yourself with if, a gallon of Hagen does. Yeah, if you uh, mean clogging up these arteries time and time again. Sure. Yeah, I'm right there. And bad haircuts. Yeah. Constant bad haircuts. Mm. So I missed that. Earl, did you know that he had a bad last hour? No, and, then, and even before, I was asking him, you know, is he okay? Does he need anything? And he said he was fine. Is that true, Fess? Yeah, I did say I was fine. Were you just lying? Well, no, at that point, I did feel fine. <laughs> when then? When don't you feel fine? When you go in the air? It's uh, like it was like a couple minutes. Be, you know, was I freaking you out talking about the future? Uh, no, I don't think so. No, no, that didn't do it. No, because I was already fidgeting and stuff at that point. So it was like a few minutes, you know, before I walked in here. Hmm. So, but I, you know, I felt good coming in. Felt good. You know, this morning, getting up. Here, someone sent us this, Beeman's gum. Oh. Let's try a Beeman. Uh, what did we say this was from, like the 40s or something? It was in that movie, The Right Stuff? Right, and I, this is from Ben in Arkansas, who posts on FBA. And Beeman's is still the number one gum there. By the way, I want to thank the FBA guys for those uh, box of cigars from their listening thread. I've been enjoying those. Do you know the FBA guys, or you're not even involved with them anymore, Dave? Oh, yeah, I know them. There yeah. was, uh, that came from Doug, that came from Skippy. That came. Doug out, Doug? Yeah. He doesn't have to do that. That came from Mark. There was a whole, there a whole bunch of people. You know what? He doesn't have to get me cigars, but the pictures of his beautiful wife are really appreciated. Okay. Did Ronnie get the other cigars from what Brendan? No. From Brendan in Ohio? I know he sent cigars. Pitsy's got it. Yeah, those were last week. You got them. Oh. All okay. right. Oh, yeah, I did get them. They're fantastic. All right. Not a big fan of the Beemans. It's like spearmint. Yeah. Except a really weak spearmint. Now, what did you put? Four pieces in your mouth? You really sound like you're struggling with it. <laughs> it's kind of hard. I think this is Beeman's from the 40s. Oh, that's fantastic. It Beeman's. tastes like those wax lips. Beeman's. You'll feel like you're, you've got the right stuff with Beeman's. <laughs> uh, Johnny, Johnny, you're on Run a Fez. Johnny. We lost you, pal. Uh, here's uh, Tim. Tim, you're on the Run of Fez show. 
Go ahead, Timmy. All right, now we have phone problems all the way across the board here, Earl, that took place over the break. Can they not hear me? Not that I know of. The phones are working fine. Yeah, I know, but are they working fine now? That's what I want to know. I know they were working fine. Thank you for the history lesson, Earl. Boy, he's struggling. You know something, Earl, the way you struggle, you should be crying like Fez. And you should go to the same doctor and sit, take the same pills. Would you like to do that? I don't want to go on any pills. And Why? Be, uh, what if it make you better? Bionic woman. I don't want... I, we can I, build I am, you stronger. I am totally anti-pill. I really do not like the pills at all. How do you know? Have you ever taken any? Um, I, I, I Antibiotics you know and what stuff I'm, like that. that but that's, I'm going to dose you. I'm going to make sure you're tripping. I don't want to be dosed. And that, that, I know me. The trip will be horrible. How do you know? Never go into it with that fucking attitude. I can't stand anybody who won't fucking try to turn a bad trip around. You've got to be able to fucking roll with it. But the whole idea of just being in this altered state of consciousness, it just, for whatever reason, freaks me out. Mm. Hey, uh, Dan. Dan, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, Ronnie B. Uh, I there it is. No working. Crying Fez. Uh, well, we got to go back a ways for No Crying Fez. What are we looking at? Four years, Fez? Uh, yeah, at least. So <laughs> I have accepted this, Fez. I think we're okay, Morris. I don't know what the hell was going on, but I think it's okay now. Okay. I don't know, maybe it was just a couple of bad lines. But you know what? To the phone guys in there, if it looks like it keeps happening on one line, then let Mars know. They wait for me to yell before they say anything. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tony, Tony, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Yeah, I heard uh, Fezzy crying. Did I win? Yeah, we'll send you in a big-ass prize closet. Where do they got, Fez? You get a DVD copy of Jericho, the complete first season, courtesy of Paramount Home Entertainment. You know, Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho. No one ever brings that up anymore. But that happened. <laughs> now on CBS, it's Skeet Ulrich. Was uh, Jericho the one with the horn? Yeah. And he played his horn so loudly that a wall fell down. Well, Jericho was the city. Okay, who played the, the horn? Joshua played the horn. All right, so Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho. That's what that song means. Right, yeah. So he his secret weapon was a horn. Right, and what he had to do was, it was him and a few horn players. It was uh -huh. a whole brass section. Right. And they had to march around the city of Jericho, I think, for like seven days. They had to, they had to play for like a whole week. Mm -hmm. And then, like, eventually the city came down. It wasn't like just a blast of the horn and it, it tumbled. You know what's interesting? That even... Back then, uh, people realized that the uh, sound waves had a uh, certain amount of power to them. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't think that they would have known that. Someone must have gotten a trumpet in the ear at that point. Uh, Oscar, you're on Ron and Fez. Hey, Ronnie B. I think you yeah. got it right. I think you need to take Earl on a little trip. I'm going to dose this motherfucker. And I ain't going to say where or when, Earl. I am not going on any trip. Hicks, psychological, psychological I need you, Hicks, I need you to come up with a care package. It's got to be Radiohead, uh, Pink Floyd, uh, and I might even want to go a little jazz in there. Maybe some Coltrane. I'll blow his mind. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Well, I don't want to blow his mind. I want to have something that he can fucking ride on the shoulders of. Because I don't like to do it. If, if things are turning bad, I'll turn myself over the music. But a lot of times, they're all, you don't want lyrics. You just want long fucking riffs. Yeah, but I I like to listen to it in a in this reality. I don't want to go into So far, it. yes, so far. Uh Robert, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey buddies. I, I was wanting to ask Fez if his uh therapist happened to listen to the program. Um Fez? No, she doesn't. I mean she's working during the show. She's treating other nuts. Why don't you give her uh CDs of just what goes on <laughs> during the daytime? And then I'd like her to give me a medal if she would. <laughs> I'll give her the casket show. This motherfucker's going to get my medal. <laughs> uh, uh, this is going to upset you. Uh, uh, Hicks and his uh, band of greasers, they did their high society show uh, Sunday night, which, uh, by the way, uh, Johnny told me he's so pissed he didn't hear back from corporate. And I go, no one's listening. Stop acting like that, you fucking imbecile. But what they did, they let their rowdy friends in here. And I saw a picture of baby fuck wearing your Notre Dame helmets. Really? Mm-hmm. And then they pulled their pants down and rubbed their pretty little asses all over your Notre Dame helmets. Oh, nice. So that's the way it goes. All mm. hell breaks loose yes. when high society's in town. You know what it's like? It's like mom and dad went away, and then what happens? They're in there jumping up and down on the master bedroom suite. Yeah. Uh, we could have controlled the people outside, maybe. I don't, I don't Who know. Who all did you, you had, like... 
like a little section hanging out? I, society heads? Yeah, yeah. yeah society <laughs> heads. <laughs> pot heads? I don't know. Were you guys smoking pot in here? Uh, no, I wasn't. <laughs> okay. Oh, brother. But some people were. I really some have no clue. Were. I was in here the entire time. I ran out once to during a break to piss, and then uh, after the show, everyone just cleared out. I heard you were exhausted after the show. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. And then I went to the bar and had a few drinks. As people said that after the show, you looked like you had been shot in the ass. <laughs> 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 he was just laying back. God, that's oh, over. over. Woo. That, and you know what? I'm fucking Earl. I had him sit in here one day uh, last week when Fez wasn't feel well. And I kept you in for like 45 minutes. And after the show, he's like, oh. And I'm like, the balls of you to do that in front of me, of all fucking people. The balls of you to act like, wow, did I, ca did I pull this fucking mule train today? He actually had his tongue hanging out of his head. Uh, World Series starts tonight. This is it. The uh, Boston Red Sox. It starts tomorrow. Oh, it's tomorrow. It's Sorry. Oh. Tomorrow night, I had it on my sheet as tonight. What's I that? thought it started tonight. That was my fuck up. Here comes the tears. Jesus. You did it again. Focus on it, Fez. Focus on the bad thing that you did. Yeah. Let the tears flow. That was me. Mm-hmm. Can't do anything right. Not a single thing. Just one break. That's all he would mm -hmm. like, God. One break. Well, yeah, you kept him from choking to death uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. but that's it. But uh, you'll like this. Um, I was reading Paulo's reviews on runfez.net. Yeah, I have time. And he uh, spelled uh, Red Sox S-O-C-K-S. And I was fucking laughing my <laughs> ass off. And, I, and then I said, I wish, uh, I, uh, I honestly wish that uh, Fez would have done that so he'd start sobbing. <laughs> It Why? sounds like something stupid I would do. Why? Why did I get the wrong night for the series? Well, that ruins the whole damn show now. Everything was set up for tonight's World Series. Um, you'll, you'll fucking hate this. The Colorado Rockies are trying to own the name Rocktober and sue anyone using this. That is insane. Yeah. Because Rocktober has been around how many years before the Rockies? Showed their fat faces in Colorado. I, I would at least since uh, AOR Radio. How many uh, ro ro October's are the Rockies <laughs> gonna be in? How many? How many? That's a fucking good point. How many have they been in, and how many are they gonna be in the future? They are this year's Houston Astros, who made it in two thousand four. So you, you're you're actually rooting for the Bo Sox now. I, I'm not rooting for him, Mr. Bennington, but I'm be realistic. The Red Sox are vastly superior to the Rockies. Now you said it was the Rockies' year, uh, Earl. You still believe that? Yes, I do. This fucking Rocktober bullshit has turned me against them, and I'm going with the boys from Bean Town, only based on the fact that they don't try to own dirty water and they let everybody use that song. One thing about the Red Sox. Hold on, Sox. let's listen to a little dirty water. <laughs> and do this for the Fleck Brothers. And gone, baby, gone. <laughs> this is going to be the greatest Rocktober of Ben Fleck's life. <laughs> People like his movie, and his team's winning. It could easily be Soxtober. Is anyone cool from Colorado? Um, the South Park guys are, you know, big Denver, Colorado freaks. Yeah, they, they they do root for the Broncos and go to Rockies games. All right, so that's the that's their cool people. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> well, Is there anyone else cool from I mean, there? Because they are released from there, and I give them all the credit in the world for that. Yeah, from there, they I were can't born think, Yeah, only Trey Parker, and Matt Stone is who I can think of. I mean, Thompson was a you know a great. Citizen. Yeah, but he moved there. He's right. a Kentucky boy. Yeah, and you really we've talked this over before. You're from where you're from. Yeah, I know. You're from where you're from, and there's nothing you can do about that. Did you see though on Game Seven of the Red Sox Indians that uh, when the Sox got up eleven to two, they they got out like old Native American drums and stuff. The players in the dugout were chopping and 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 playing drums. On, and like doing like the Native American drum whistle thing to the Cleveland Indians. I thought that's ridiculous. No, that's heck. It's not like the Indians players themselves do the drum. Yeah. Why attack those guys? They're they're losing game seven. They feel bad enough as it is. Right. If their fans are jerky, that's one thing. I still can't for, uh, fucking forgive the Pirates for that we are family thing. It has not gone away <laughs> in my life. I still hate those bastards for it.
Uh, Fez, what time are you seeing your shrink today? Um, I see the the shrink pr- at six thirty. Dave, I want you in on that. Okay, I want you down there and let them know that uh, it's a daily crying jag. I will. Can I go to the bar first? Or? No. Oh. Ah, uh, you know what? An hour and a half. <laughs> An hour and a half. Give him your credit card, Fez. <laughs> An hour and a half? Yeah. I'll have to pour him into the shrink's office. Now, after Watley almost uh, died yesterday, Beth said that she would come in and teach us CPR. So, two things. Number one, we're going to stop him from choking, uh, which we should all know that. Have you ever done the Heimlich to anyone before? No. I did in Disney World and saved a life. Whoa. Now, and had never even done it before. Just, you know, had seen it on TV. Uh, help uh, someone spit up a half a sandwich. Uh, and then also, I think we're going to be able to help you with your heart attacks when you have your heart attack. Yes, I want to be able to bring me back to life. I'd like that to be me. I want to be the one. You know, like they say that thing never op, uh, like writing, uh, if they, if a, a guy writes a book, they don't want him to do the screenplay. They're like, saying it's like operating on your own child. I wouldn't want to operate on my own child. <laughs> if I had the yeah. skills and felt like I'm the best doctor, let me operate on my kid before I hand it over to someone else. What about you, Watley? Um, I would not operate on my own child. If you had the skills. If I, even if I had the skills, I would not operate on my own child. Why? Because I would have trouble, like, cutting my child open. Even if I had all the great skills, I would say, yeah, and, and I'm saving. But you repairing. You would know that you're repairing and healing, not hurting. Yeah, but still. I, right, I, how would you feel? You're the best heart surgeon in the world, right? Right. You're the best. Mm-hmm. You would turn it over, the number two guy? To operate on your child? So you can't even say, I'll get my child the best heart surgeon in the world. And that would be you. I would still turn it over. I'd be too emotionally involved. I'd probably be crying into my child's open chest. Then what happens? The kid dies, and the other doctor said, I just didn't have the skills. I'm not the best. How do you live with yourself? Yeah, that's going to be tough. Too late. Already dead. Oh, man. (laughs) Already dead. Way to go. You had the opportunity to help your child. Earl, what about you? I would do it. Without Earl. question, I would operate on my own. First team. of all, this would we'd have to come up with the premise that you're good at anything. <laughs> if I was you, I wouldn't even let, you shouldn't even make a grilled cheese for a child. Earl was telling me today that he's very depressed in the way his, his life turned out, and he's very lonely. I can see that. What's, what's going on with you? No, there's just aspects of my personal life that I'm not, uh, I just thought I'd be in a much better place. White? I, did not, you think you'd be white by this age? Not be white. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Guilt-free when you I masturbate. I flip out with him. Uh, come on in here. <laughs> Earl, he can't masturbate. Nope. First, <laughs> the problem is he doesn't have the energy to masturbate. He's too <laughs> fucking lazy to stroke his own cock. Look at high society out there just talking about last Sunday's show. You know what? I'm doing my own fucking show, you pricks. Uh, what has got you down, big man? I just thought I'd be in a much... I mean, like... I always kind of wanted to be like my father. My father, by the time he was 21, he had, he had a couple of kids. He had the house. He had the car. Uh, you're what, 38? I'm 37. When are you going to be 38? Uh, May. Okay. You got nothing. I, <laughs> you really have nothing. I don't have a car, and you know I'm probably going to buy my apartment. It's going on the block. But isn't this by choice that you live the way you live? Um, part- I mean, let's face it. You're a lonely guy. I don't think I'm a... Uh, I mean, actually, the last few weeks, I've, I've, met, I've realized that I am lonely, but I was just preferred to be alone for a long time. Right. But again, you made that choice. Why are you upset about it? Uh, it's a bad choice. You know, people make bad choices in their lives, and that was Who, the one. All right, Dave, who's lonelier, Fez or Earl? I think Earl's uh, lonelier. I truly do. Why th- is that? Um, I think Fez is so wrapped up in his mental problems and insanity that he doesn't even realize that he's lonely. But I don't think that Earl is as um, unstable as Fez. And Earl's recognizing that, you know, he's just totally by himself and will be probably for the rest of his life. What do you think, Fez? Who's lonelier? I think Earl is lonelier because I, you know, I will admit my life is a choice. But I go in that apartment, you know, like all weekend, yeah. and I prefer it that way. Earl kind of comes out into the city, he'll walk around, he'll do stuff all by himself, and then stay here at the studio till all hours. That's every night. But I think he's lonelier. All right. What did you do last night, Fess? Um, I went to the gym, and then I went home. All right. And that was preferable for you? Yeah. That was a nice night. Yeah. But I was fine with last night. Scale 1 to 10, well, how was your night? Uh, it was 
six last night. Okay. Earl, scale one to ten, how was your night? Uh, last night, I would say an eight. Ooh, eight oh. to six. Early lead for Earl. Uh, what time were you here till? 11, 30, 12 o'clock? No, not at all. I left here about seven, mm-hmm. and I went to a show. Really? By yourself? Yeah, I went by myself. Uh, did you, did you, were you friends with anybody there? Did you make friends? No, not just at all. Just hung in the back? Just kind of hung in the back, because I, I got there just as the show was starting, so. Okay. What show did you go see? I saw Gina Gershon's show. Uh, oh, her search, rock show? Uh, in Search of Clea. How was it? It was... It was very odd and quirky. It was more of like, uh, it was almost a musical, not much like a rock show. All right. Now, uh, Dave, who had the better night? Uh, Fez, he goes to his rehab, uh, rehab workout. Then he goes home, relaxes. Earl goes to a Gina Gershon show. You'd think it would be nice, but he went alone and uh, didn't interact with anybody. Fez had the better night because he was more comfortable, he was at ease, and he didn't miss anybody. Earl, I guarantee you, would have loved to have shared that Gina Gershom experience with someone. But he you couldn't. didn't talk to anybody all night? Well, I talked to one person last night. Who's that? I talked to Gina Gershom. Come on, he wins. <laughs> he fucking oh, man. man. Well, he left that man. detail yeah. out. Now, how did you talk with Gina Gershon? It was funny because after the show, I was going to uh, take the Long Island Railroad home because I didn't want to, because trains run local after like right. 11 or so. So I'm practically leaving, and she was talking to a crowd. She was surrounded by her mom and a bunch of other people. She turns, she looks at me, and she just kind of looks at me like she knew me. Yeah. And then she went, and the first words out of her mouth was, I, it's like, oh my God, how are you? It's like, and I went, how you doing? I'm Earl from, from the Ron and Fez show. She goes, I know. It's like, I got your picture. I made a copy of that picture that I... Remember she bought that Ray Charles picture? Out from underneath you at the Hard Rock show. Yeah. She she goes, I made... Because it's so weird. I made three copies of that picture. Because it's at my L.A. house, and I wanted to send it to you. Wow. Wow. That's a great night. That's a fucking great night. I fucking, I'm fucking. i backpedaling. Yeah. That's I mean, he's having night. fucking uh, interaction with Gina Gershon. And, and I, you know, I thanked her. I was like, what? And, you know, we talked about... She talked about some of the other stuff she bought at the auction and how much she, he goes. She goes, are you guys, for some reason, she goes, are you guys back? And I went, yeah, we're back. It's like, when you haven't gone anywhere, do you still want to? We told her the studio was fucked up when she went to come in. I said, the studio's done and, you know, you're more than welcome to come in. She was like, can we play music? I was like, sure, we can do pretty much whatever you want. And she was like, great. Uh, Earl had a great night. That would be a great night for anybody. Yeah. You know, I, I gave him my card. How'd she look? Fantastic. Absolutely stunning. Do you smell anything? Do you smell her at all? She smelled like stage and woman mm. and Gina. Oh. Fucking stage sweat. <laughs> smells like stage. Is that wood? Stage. She was on stage. So what does that smell like? Wood? No, sweat. Yeah. Like she fucking worked it out. Yeah, I mean, it was like almost a two-hour show. Almost both fuck smell. <laughs> she did like a two-hour show. and, and uh, Musky? She have a womanly musk? Uh, she definitely uh, she, she uh, freshened herself up before she came out to greet people. Powder? Yeah. That's classy. Oh, I don't know. I like, I like a shower. Yeah. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't like powder on sweat. It's a problem I have with all strippers. <laughs> it's too much. You know what I mean? It just grosses me a little bit. Just a little bit. All right. So you had him, Fez, until he interacted with Gina Gershon. Yeah. Because being alone at a show, it's pretty sad. But then the fucking person in the show sees you, remembers you, and said, oh, I made an extra picture for you. Which he had no right to do, by the way. That was sold as a piece of art, so. But that's very nice. <laughs> yeah, so when we talked. Did she sign it? Hey, dear Earl, here's a picture of another black guy. <laughs> she, um, again, I gave him my card, and she goes, um, I'm going to go back to L.A. in a couple of weeks, and when I get back, I'll send it to you because it's at her L.A. house. And she's been in New York for pretty much all of October. Rocktober. Rocktober. Well, I can't say that because the Rockies will sue the shit out of XM. So, I mean, that that was my night. And, you know, that's well, that what's the breaking my news night. over here with this airplane, Fez, behind you? Um, uh, right now it's just saying breaking news, and I can't even see what kind of plane that is. I think it's uh, a Tai Taiwan flight. What happened? Um, it hasn't said yet. They're just tracking the flight. Yeah, well, when they track a flight, it normally means they have no landing gear or something. Yeah, that's usually with that when they're watching it from the air. This is MSNBC. Uh, somebody check in there, okay? What do you got, Dave? Because of the wildfires, the smoke is going over the landing, so the plane has to circle until uh, it no, can see. No, I don't see. care about that. That's nothing. That's just making news out of nothing. Oh, we can't land. There's a lot of smoke. So what? 
That's not a big fucking news story. That's not a runaway goddamn plane. Uh, here is Casper. Uh, Casper, you're on Run Fez. Hey, guys. Uh, this has got to be a lie by Earl. What male waits an hour and a half into the show to mention he talked to the hottest chick, one of the hottest chicks in the world last night, and you had to drag it out of him? You know what? But it's very, very true. Earl doesn't normally come rushing in and telling us he did something. And he does have the city fucking wired. I mean, he's got me into a bunch of things before. Normally he uses Ben, but he has his own fucking things, too. Uh, Leader, you're on Fez. Hey, Earl's such a story topper. He has to hold back enough information just so Fez can get out in the lead a little bit, just so he could come back with more. And did, yeah, you did kind of do that, Earl, because uh, you made it seem like it's pathetic that you were at a show all by yourself. And then at the very end, you fucking topped it off with the big t- twist that not only do you, do you hang out with Gina Gershon, but she comes looking for you when she sees you. Yeah, he rope-a-doped me because go- at that, the end, he goes, well, I did interact with one person. Just took me right in. No, I was just telling a story. That's, uh, people ask me what I do. I, that's what then I why do. you hate your life? Your life is pretty damn good. How about that? I mean, that was last... I mean, at, last night was like a conscious effort to like... Do he thought more, he'd be married to Gina Gershon by now. Do more of that stuff, just to get back into going back out and doing stuff like that again. But generally, I don't. And you know, and like all my friends, that they're, they're married and have kids. Your, like, your friends have grandkids by now. They're thirty-seven. <laughs> Black people are normally grandparents at age thirty-seven. At least I know too. <laughs> their kids are like. <laughs> Oh God! I mean, that's so true. I mean, I know one guy who was a father right before right before we got out of high school, and now his kid is having a kid. Sure, of course. It's the Whoopi Goldberg theory. I think she was a grandmother by <laughs> 30. age thirty-seven. So I don't know. Uh, here's the thing: uh, maybe you worry a little bit too much, or maybe you're doing just fine. Uh, I don't know. You just you know you take an assessment of where you are, and you, I think it's good that you take assessments where you are in your life and where you. Need you to have go. A, you have a dead end fucking job. Let's face it, you're not moving on in radio. Radio is not for you. Oh, but I and you can't b- even date, let alone be in a relationship. Why don't you fucking join one of those uh, internet things where they set up dates for you and you just go out and have, go on bad dates? Uh, I know around New York they have what is the speed dating thing. Yeah, I, a couple of people recommended that to me, and I'm like, I don't know if I can even deal with that because I used to speed date all the time. I'd excuse myself, go in the bathroom, do two fucking rails of crystal meth, come back. It's different. Yeah, it's a different speed dating. My fucking line always was, "Hey, you ever? Uh, did you ever come on crystal meth? It's fucking wild." Anyone say yes? Half. <laughs> yeah, they're either going to be running screaming into the night or come on, big man, let's party. And that's the fucking sound you want to hear. Uh, John, John, you're on Run Fez. Yeah, Ronnie, uh, Earl said, I love Earl. I'm the guy who always praises him, but last night was eight. What would it have to be to be a 10? Would you have to get a blowjob or something? I mean, you, yeah, what would it take for your eight night to become a 10? Um, if that were like an actual date date, and they're like, you know, Gina Ger- that what? What's a bigger deal breaker? You, you so, know if you G- had a broad with you when Gina Gershon was talking to you, that would have been perfect. Oh yeah, without question, that, that would have been, been a nine. And then Gina Gershon goes, "Hey, you mind if I sl- sleep with you on your date?" That's a ten. <laughs> That's quite a night. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here's Robert. Robert, you're on a fez. Go ahead, Robert. Uh, we well, lost you. Here is uh, Mark. Mark, you're on Ronnie Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Um, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. Hey, I was just calling. Now, it's completely, it's clearly insane that the Rockies are trying to patent Rocktober. That's really, really stupid. But being someone from Colorado, I just need to stick up for Colorado real quick and say that Neil Cassidy, you know, famous from the Beats, was from uh, Colorado. As is an actor. Was he in Denver? You- yeah, he's from Denver. Okay. And an actor I know you like, uh, Ronnie, Don Cheadle. All right, Don Cheadle, this is all happening for me. And uh, uh, Foxy Brown, Rosie Greer. Uh, Rosie Pam Greer. Greer. <laughs> it's not Pam, Pam Greer. Greer. <laughs> you Pam fucked Greer. up by saying Rosie Greer, who was part of the L.A. Fierce and Foursome, <laughs> and also broke Sirhan Sirhan's thumb. Which has got to be the greatest thing a sports figure has ever done. Broke the thumb of Sirhan Sirhan. <laughs> Won't be shooting with this hand anymore. 
But how do you mistake Pam Greer from a 300 pound line? Rosie Greer would have been beloved in this country, uh, except for the OJ thing. He was one of the ones that went in and was like nice to OJ. And people turned on him then, and he's never been back since. I don't know why not. I mean, a lot of people defended O.J. They singled him out. Well, the story was that O.J. confessed it to Rosie, and Rosie wasn't giving him up. See that? I didn't know. I didn't know that. And, you don't read the paper. But you, and you know, plus, you don't give up. You don't give up your friends, do you? A wife killer and a waiter killer. I know we come from two different backgrounds, so I know you got your own ghetto thing. It's like a street thing. Man, it's just like, well... You're I, fucking Nino Brown, if you're anybody in this world. <laughs> Am I not my brother's keeper? Uh, Tommy. Tommy, can you hear me? I'm here, buddy. Listen, I, I got... Tommy? You, I mean, well, yeah, I'm here with you. Tommy, can you hear me? I can hear you, right Tommy. <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> Charlie, you're on run Fez. Hey, fellas, uh, I know that, uh, what was it, Eastside Days said Matt Stone, but also Tim Allen, uh, Jack Dempsey, Douglas Fairbanks. Well, Tim Allen's Colorado. from Detroit. He always makes a big uh, thing out of that. Yep. So he's not no, he's, from Colorado. No, he was born in Colorado. I don't know why Look he makes up. a big thing out of Detroit then. That's where tool time oh. took place. Yeah. Look it up. Well, I don't really have the time to look up a lot of Tim <laughs> Allen information. I mean, you had me with Neil Cassidy, but by the time you get to Tim Allen, Jack Dempsey works, too. What was the last thing Tim Allen was in besides Home Improvement? Uh, he had a big hit movie uh, last year with that uh, We're All Riding Around in, in Motorcycles with John Travolta. Yeah, Tim Allen was born in uh, Denver. All right. Get out of Denver, baby. Things to do with Denver when you're dead. You're right, big man. I'm yeah. taking two points off for Tim Allen. <laughs> 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 I never got that fucking premise. Was it I gotta be careful in case I have to fucking unmask him. What's Wild that? Hogs. Was that the movie? Yeah, I guess it was. I didn't go to it. You're not going to believe this, Earl, but I didn't go to Wild Hogs. I didn't see it either. I just, I, that What's coming, coming out this week? Uh, the Sidney Lumet movie's coming out. That's what week. I want to say. Did you say it? Uh, no, I have not even seen the trailer yet, but I'm reading really good things. Is it called uh, An Hour Before You're Dead or something, something like before, some Irish? Before the Devil Knows You're Dead. Before the Devil Knows You're Dead, some Irish fucking saying, half an Irish saying. Unmask coming up, Fuzzy. It's going to be this Thursday. That's October 25th. Susie Essman from Curb Your Enthusiasm and Gallagher. They're the very special Unmasked guests for this Thursday. It's all starting at 12.30 p.m. Comics Comedy Club in New York City on West 14th Street. To be part of the audience, email XM. Unmasked at gmail.com. That's XM Unmasked at gmail.com. Make sure you get your email request in. We'll make sure you get to be part of the studio audience. That's this Thursday starting at 1230. Um, Earl, what about the bald chick down the hall? I saw her the other day. She's a black bald chick. She's fucking unbelievable. Stunning. You and, saw her? Oh, yeah. I see her all the time. We we exchange pleasantries in the hallway. Like what? We both have bald head? We're both black? <laughs> so <laughs> much. Just, just say a quick hello. How are you? That's it. That's it? But, I mean, there's something really hot about a bald black chick. I've, and I've seen more than one. It, 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 it highlights their features. It makes you look at their... Uh, it I works just, for uh, the bald thing for a chick. It either really works or it doesn't. Or, but this is what depressed me. You're with a bald black chick. You pull her fucking pants down. She's got a big bush. I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. I expect. Uh, I, I would literally think about suing. I go. I expect you to take care of that. I mean, more often than not. What do you like? How do you like them to trim up, bro? Uh, I like nothing. Full wax. Nothing at all. Clean. So it looks like a 12-year-old boy's asshole? <laughs> not a 12-year-old 12, 12 boy. Not in that respect, but I want nothing on that. Uh, what about for you, Dave? I enjoy a little bit of hair. You want I'm, a Hitler mustache? Sure. Yeah, I what? like it. I like the way it feels on my chin. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go Pepper Hicks. Pepper, what do you think? Uh, bald. Bald. Really? Yeah, I don't like hair. So, would that be a deal breaker for you? Uh... In the end, no, but I prefer it uh, be bald. You tell Bronx Johnny to keep himself that way for you? <laughs> Trim it up for me. Are you and Johnny over there going like this? You know what? we got to really go over a couple things. <laughs> Bring Johnny in here. Or I'll get out. I've had enough of you. You just fucking drug me down today. Fez feels more comfortable because the fucking show was slowing down, but it drives me nuts. 
Johnny, how are you? How's everything with high society? Uh, going to look good, I guess. Is it church? It's pretty church, preach type shit. Pretty good. Uh, Johnny, the rich boys. I know you hate them. It's getting a little annoying. I know. We uh, coming in today, they fucking sipping lattes and shit. I barely had enough for 50 cent soda. That's what drives me crazy. It's fucking bonkers back then. They were fucking handed. They were handed their success. <laughs> they get, fucking bought their button, if you know what I'm saying. No, no, they, they get to talk to corporate, like the money they came back. We didn't even get a, hey, you know, nice try, good job stuff, something, something yeah. like that. Now, uh, Elo was in here. Yeah. Uh, tell me that uh, Unmasked is the best thing XM's ever done. But why didn't he say anything nice to you? Didn't even uh, look at us. We weren't even in the room. Me and Hicks were back there. Nothing. He doesn't know you. No. Uh, you're driving fast crazy because you're wearing your Unmasked team. The, the teams are, are not uh, matching. Yeah, no, no, this ain't even a team. It's a FUBU shirt, so... Uh, Does that drive you crazy at office? It drives me crazy because it's a Yankees cap, and even though you're saying it's FUBU, it looks like a Dallas Cowboys jersey. <laughs> so, yeah, it drives me now crazy. Now with the numbers on the sh shoulders. Mm. And you're not us, by us, are you? No, not you at You consider all. yourself black? Uh, I hang with them, so I guess... I consider you black, if that means anything <laughs> at all. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely don't consider you white. So if that well, helps, I don't know if I'd ever pass. So you really wouldn't. No, nah, not like uh, the rich boys or Ted and Sam. Oh, little, did, uh, don't you hate them? A little bit, yeah. Like I think Sam's only twenty-two. He drives a fucking Range Rover. It's a yeah. little ridiculous. Yeah. Well, Daddy, Daddy's there <laughs> for him. Daddy takes care of everything. Interesting. Kid had a gold teething ring. Interesting fact about uh, Sam, though. He worked for Graz, the intern we have here. I didn't know that. Yeah, at Syracuse University. Graz was his boss. And now, this, now, how's he acting about that to this oh, day? Oh, Sam, like, well, I didn't even uh, know him in college. Oh, what a he? fucking jerk off. <laughs> Graz, you got to put up with this shit? Somebody that you used to uh, be his boss. What, what was the context? Like the radio station there? Yeah, yeah. What were you, the PD of the college radio station? Um, I was the general manager of the college radio station. GM. I was there, yeah. Right. I was in charge. You were the Sean Portman of the gang. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, Sam caused a little bit of a ruckus, but he definitely was one of the best shows we ever had on What air. kind of ruckus? Uh... Well, he'd abuse the webcam a lot on air. What would he do, put his ball sack on it? Uh, no, just basically any time he'd leave, he'd put his uh, web address on there and leave. it would probably stay there about 24 hours a day and no one could see what was actually going on in the studio. So did you say, Sam, I need to have a talk with you about the self-promotion? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Now, and, uh, how does he treat you now that he's a uh, producer? Part of the Army, uh, O&A Army, Army Producers. Um, I mean, it's fine. You know, we're, we're buddies. We patch things up on that end, you know, and I've but always he, liked his work. he really so. used to drive you crazy. A little bit, you know, because we were like, there's three radio stations in Syracuse. It's very hard, so, you know, we always had to be in line with the administration, and when when you got the shock jockery going on, it's a little hard to What kind of shock jock stuff was he doing? Counting his fucking parents' cash on the radio? Um, well, it was kind of funny. He had, like, an intern he would do crazy things with. You know, he was obviously influenced by Open Anthony a lot. So, basically, it was watered down ONA. Yeah, exactly. Unbelievable. Again, handed to him. Then he probably went like this Mom, Dad, could you buy ONA for me? <laughs> well, we can't buy them for you, but we'll buy your way in. Oh, I bet I bet Opie got a fucking check for fifteen hundred <laughs> just to bring him in. Oh, rich boys. Yeah. Dan uh Dan's pretty cool, like he doesn't say much. But when yeah. you count that much money, what do you have to say? Your money speaks for itself. I know. He's the fucking Cherry Valance of the gang, where he's not doing all the main <laughs> stuff, but it comes off the... Grab Lily for me. Lily used to date him. And she's been in a... Oh, God, she's been depressed lately. She really feels bad. Hey, by the way, Lily, too, thank you so much for bringing the Seattle look back. I didn't think anyone was going to do it, <laughs> but you're flying the, gr the grunge flag. You got the flannel going. I appreciate Thank you. Uh, you Trying something different. Uh, you you know about the rich boys, right? Yeah. They started shit. Oh yeah. With our guys, high society, uh, and you dated then for a short time, right? Yeah, we went out like twice, two or three times. What was that like? Not very memorable. Top, where did he take you? Top of the rock? You're up there dancing? No, in the no. Night? We went to <laughs> classy. Um, yeah. Eastside Dave's shitty Chinese restaurant where they serve you boxed wine with your meal. All right. So basically, he felt like you were a whore. He couldn't yeah, take around I everybody think else. So. I and he know, couldn't take the Albanian oak around all, really all of his rich friends. I thought I was going to go to like the Four Seasons, <laughs> right? And be treated like a lady. But he he goes like this. Well, the kind of money she has, she wouldn't even make it to one season. <laughs> Every thing because he uh he i go did you hear the boys he goes not during yachting tom so he did not hear your show because i guess there was some yacht race off fucking the hamptons i ain't offended like occasionally i might i might play uh polo with uh don wickler one day who knows 
polio is what you're going to play with that fucking frothing at the, mass, uh, at the mouth motherfucker. All right, so he takes you to some shitty Chinese restaurant where he couldn't run into anybody from his social status. Then yeah. what? Um, and then drinks at like a dive bar again so mm. he wouldn't be caught with So me. he's slumming with the Muslim girl. Yeah, because I'm not, you know, high society... Uptown, right. you know, you're not an uptown side, girl, right? You know, upper east side chick, you know. You're from, from the other side of the tracks, yeah. Jersey. Jersey trash is yeah. probably what he was thinking in his head. Do you get the hair nice and high to go out with him, or did you fucking? No, I tried to keep it really classy. It was nice and straight. I was mm. going for a classy look, but. All right. So, uh, what was the second date? Um, brunch. <sighs> Hideous. <laughs> Jeez. What you have? French toast. That's his idea of a nice something. I don't know. Yeah. I can't That's remember. Fancy lunch. Yeah. Oh, you probably don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> it's rye toast. He's bragging about rye toast like she's never seen it before. He probably had mimosas fucking no champagne. I'm oh, sure yeah. he was. Yeah. Doing yeah. fucking, what was he doing, rails off your ass? <laughs> <laughs> no. So He's is that when too he, white collar for that. Is that when he demanded oral? No. <laughs> oh. I There was wine involved, I know that. So. Sure. Get her drunk. <laughs> Get wine, her drunk. Wine with brunch? No, that was the first. Yeah. Right. Don't say anything. Today. <laughs> he doesn't even know there's a meal between breakfast and lunch. Here's the problem with brunch. You think, oh, great, extra meal. No, it's just made to take up the other two. So instead of having breakfast and lunch, now you're just having a brunch. <laughs> so a you're really getting fucked. It's like a sloppy doggy bag if you think about it. You I do think about it. You put everything in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no spaghetti. <laughs> if this is brunch, I like eggs and spaghetti. Why, can, why does it not work? It's a fucking fine meal. I, I wouldn't mind having a breakfast pizza, though. There's something about pizza with eggs and sausage on it I find fascinating. Now you mean regular pizza or just a bagel? No. I mean a regular pizza, yeah. but it's got like fucking, it's got like an omelet on it. I think uh, Denny's had that for a little while. Say the word Denny's to me again and see if I'm going to pay attention <laughs> to you. <laughs> Denny's, come on, Johnny. God, it's a good eat sometimes. If you go down to Florida, you on the highway, that's all they have. Believe me, I used to deal dope out of fucking <laughs> Denny's. I had a table in the back. I'm always listening to the ground. That's why I say welcome, Earl. Welcome to the boom town. You know, when you hear me doing lyrics, it'll be so fucking great if you, if you woke up and grabbed one. So that's all you're about right now, trying to get your dignity back. Yeah. I was really embarrassed by him. Sure you were. You know? He thought he was too good, but now you got a now you got a guy who treats you like good, right? Yeah, absolutely. He's this a really good guy. Seems to be serious with you and Jennifer. Mm -hmm. It's going really well, really well. Did Fez ever have the birth control talk with you? Because <laughs> I want him to sit down. Because we don't we know you're at an age where you're going to be trying things, mm -hmm. but we don't want you to you know not have your youth. Okay. Don't make a mistake, you could regret the rest of your life. Remember Fez at his age, he looked like Juno, walking around, he didn't know what to do with that baby. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the future of the music business, Johnny. The cool. future of the music business, because it's changing out from underneath this. That's what's up, all that technology out there should be. I like the way you're thinking. You, you ought to do something like this on High Society. <laughs> something topical would be nice. Were you guys high for the show? Uh, Run a Fez show. <laughs> 